Today's talk is about knowing your numbers. How well do you know your numbers for your marketplace? You know, do you know your statistics? Do you know what's going on in your market? Can you have conversations with buyers and sellers about what's going on in the marketplace? Do you know the history of your market, right? Do you know the history of your marketplace? Do you know, can you go back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and know what the trends have been over a 30 year period. Do you know your trends right now that are currently happening in the marketplace? Okay, incredibly important to know this. Is your market truly transitioning from a default market to a traditional market? What are the feelings on that? Are you, ha, is it really in a transition? You know, let's start off with this. How many closed transaction has happened over the last 10 years. Does anybody know the amount of closed transaction each year for the last 10 years? Does anybody know that? Bill, do you know that? Okay, so, so let, let me just give you an example, starting maybe 2000, right? And so the year 2000, there was about 38,000 closings, and then 39, and then it jumped to 40,500, then 42,000. Then in 2005, there was 43,500 sales. Okay, then 2006, it dropped to 32,000 homes for sale or homes that sold. 2007 was the worst year in closings at 18,000 transactions. Then the market bounced up. And then in 2009 to 2012, we had our best years, better than 2005. We closed all the way up to 48,000 closings in the year of 2011. Okay, so how many closings did we have last year? Do we know those numbers? You know, we closed 38,000 transactions. Okay, what are we on track to close this year? Can anybody guess what we're going to close in total closed transactions for this year? Can anybody throw a number out? 45,000, 26,000. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that we're on track somewhere around the range of 30 to 32,000 closings this year. Okay, now I, I know my stats, I know my numbers, but I don't go out and list and present and work with buyers, okay, because if not, I could tell you detailed number by number because I'm going to use that in my presentation. You, all of you should know exactly what's going on in the marketplace, okay? We're, cl we're closing on average about 2,200 homes per month, okay? So 30,000, 32,000 closings for this year. Now, does that benefit you? Or how does that benefit you? Okay, is it a good thing? Is it positive? Is it negative? How does it affect you, the numbers that are going on in the marketplace? You know, how many transactions will be short sales? How many of those transactions are gonna be REOs? How many traditional sales are going on? Isn't it important for you to plan uh, know, know what is going on in the marketplace, right? What is actually closing? You know, what are the ratios of short sales? If I put a listing, you know, if I take a listing that's a short sale, what are the odds of me actually closing on that property? You know, these are numbers that you, you have to know. How about this? How many cash sales uh, or investors are buying in the marketplace? What total percentage of that counts for all closed transactions? Okay, anybody know the percentage over the last four or five years? Can you give me a percentage of all the closings, how much were cash investors? Okay, and somebody else said? 60. So I would say the average over the last five or six years have been around 60%. They range, right now it's at 47%. Some of those buyers are coming out of the market or leaving the market investors, so that number's coming down but it has been around 60% of the total sales have been cash transactions in the marketplace over the last four or five years, okay? How? 48,000 transactions, okay. So me, I know my numbers. I would say that we are on track for 30 or 32,000 sales based on year to date, the closings that we have based on the pendings that we have right now, uh, it tells us that we're on track for that number. Now, if we close much more, we better pick up the pace in the marketplace to get to 40,000 plus transactions. 
Now, how many conventional loans, okay, have closed over the last couple of years? Do you know your percentages there, right? How can you how can you benefit from that? How many FHA loans have closed over the last four or five years? Do we know that number? So let me share with you. Last four years, you know, FHA loans were at twelve, fourteen thousand per year, and in, in falling each year, it's coming down a couple thousand. You know, down to where it's something like some number like four or five thousand FHA loans closed in the last year. It has dipped tremendously. Okay. How does that affect you? What does that mean? Does that mean that financing is getting tougher? Does it mean that now more first time home buyers are going conventional? Maybe it's a little bit less expensive to do a conventional loan over an FHA loan. I don't know, but these are numbers that you have to know in your market. You know, if FHA is coming down tremendously, well, you know, your buyer, are you telling them that you're going to do a conventional and prepare for a 5% down? Or you're, tell, you're setting the expectations by saying you only need 3.5% down, right? You, gotta, you have to know these stats, know these numbers. How many VA loans are happening in the marketplace? Not too many people pay attention to VA loans. Are, are the numbers growing? Is it getting bigger? So how would that affect your marketing, your strategies based on FHA loans, conventional loans? What if the majority of sales right now that we're going on were 80% cash sales. Would that adjust your marketing and your advertising? Think about it, okay? So is VA uh, picking up? Is FHA, is it dropping? Uh, it's important to know these stats and know these numbers. How does it affect your clients? How does it affect your customers? How does it affect the listings that you're trying to sell, okay? Does it change the strategy for marketing? Does it change the strategy for prospecting, right? The amount of sales, what type of sales that are going on. Another number to know, knowing your numbers. What's moving in the marketplace? What price range is moving? What market is hot? Is the high end starting to sell now and move? I hear it is. You know, is the 100 to 200,000 range very little inventory? Is that the sweet spot to take inventory at that price? Does the 250 to 300 range, is that, is that price range moving quickly or not? These are numbers that you have to know. Okay, cash buyers. Are they still buying? You know, it sounds like the percentage is coming down to 47%. Are they still buying or are they pulling out of the marketplace, right? The market seems to have softened up just a little bit, right? Inventory climbed from 3,000 to 8 or 9,000. Now it's been sitting flat at 8,000 for you know the last six months. Are those signs? Are we in a stable market? You know, are we now in a traditional market? Uh, is the price is starting to drop? We're seeing a lot of price reductions. We're seeing a lot of overpriced listings that they're not selling. Okay, is the small investors, the speculators, small flippers, are they still out there buying properties? What about the institutional buyers? The buyers that are buying thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of properties across the country, they've been here in this marketplace. You know, they're buying at the court steps, they're buying in the MLS. Are they still buying right now? Or are they pulling out of the market? Okay, they're from three to five hours, uh, three to five hours a day. And <clears throat> people, sellers, homeowners, they admire that, right? They, you know, they're thinking about listing their property. They want somebody that's going to work hard for them. You're knocking on the door. People admire that. Okay. So imagine he goes out and he finds sellers, and he goes out and he converts motivated sellers that are ready to list a property. He sets the appointment. He goes out and presents with a wealth of knowledge. He qualifies the sellers before he goes out. He now sits in front of a motivated seller. He's ready to present. He presents with knowledge and experience. Okay, it, it's a no-brainer for a seller who's motivated to sell. It's a no-brainer to pay full commission and list a property with him, right? Why? Because he's a professional salesperson. He knows his numbers. He knows his stats. So how, the question is, how well do you know your market? How well do you know your market? You know, how important is it to know your marketplace? 
Will it cause you to do more business? Uh, is it going to help you in your prospecting, knowing the stats and the numbers? Will it help you beat your competitors? Think about it. What is your competitors doing? You know, what type of business do they do? Do you know what your competitors are doing? That was one of the biggest advantages that I had. I knew all my competitors. Any presentation that I went into and a competitor was going to that appointment, trust me, I knew numbers. I had the ammunition to make sure that I was taking that listing and not my competitor. So is it going to cause you to do more business by knowing your numbers? Will it help you beat your competition? Will it give you the edge okay, on taking that listing? How many appointments do you go on and you just barely missed that listing taken? John, you missed that listing by a couple hours, right? Because if not, you would have taken that listing, right? So knowing your numbers, will it help you get to the next level? Will it help you get to the next level? Will it cause you to convert more appointments into contracts? They say contacts equals contracts. How many contacts you're making? That's another way of knowing your numbers. Business is everywhere in the marketplace. Don't buy into people who are not buying or selling. It could be the worst of the market. 2007, fourth quarter, there was only 600 sales happening per month. The way I looked at it, how much of that 600 can I take? How much of it is that mine? While everybody's crying the blues and all the deals are falling apart and the market is crashing, I'm looking at it and saying, how can I take a piece of those 600 transactions? Let me tell you, people want to buy, people want to sell. Every single day, everybody wants to talk about real estate. And you have 5,000 new listings entering the market every single month. You have 5,000 properties entering the market. And we have 11,000 agents, which 90% of them are part-time agents. How could you not take two, three, four listings a month? How could you not do that? How much of that inventory do you want for yourself? Okay, there's four or five, 6,000 listings coming on the market. How much of that do you want to take? How bad do you want it? And what price will you pay to get it? What sacrifice will you make to take that inventory? What sacrifice will you make to hit the goals that you want for yourself? If you know your numbers, if you know your market, Okay, uh, if you know your statistics, people will hire you, people will want to buy with you, people will sell homes with you and list properties. Okay, be a professional, know your numbers, and be your very best. I assure you, you will take a lot of listings, you will do a lot of buyer sales, and you'll do all the business that you want to do.